the pressure there for a middle 10, 15 minutes. We're going to hear the thoughts from Sean and Jolie and Natalie is also with us. Um, Jolie, begin with you. Thoughts? Um, the rhythm hasn't kind of been there as I would have expected it to be. There's been a few misplaced passes which have led to opportunities for Bournemouth, but in regards to the goals, two special goals for different reasons. Um, David Silver again obviously showcased what he brings and uh, Jesus goal, which is not what we usually see from him, but we know he has the capability to do at any given time. Um, Bournemouth have had opportunities to score, but great block on the line from, from Atamendi as well. And what about for you, Sean? Did you enjoy that first half? Yes, I did. I think, if anything, City will look for the, the centre-backs to move the ball a little quicker. I think that will get the rhythm, as Julian's talking about, get that rhythm going. But, um, yeah, pleased with it 2-0. Um, my prediction still on course. I got a bit nervous thinking, <laughs> thinking, whoa, that... that they, they had a great chance. And tactically, looking at what they're doing, they're trying to hit Billing because he's, he's like 6'4", and he's won everything, whether it's been a goal kick or throw in, and a bit of old school tactics, but it's, it's been a factor for them. Of course, within sort of the first five, six minutes there, David Silva, the absolute magician, steps up with it. And, I mean, an absolute world-class free kick. Um, and at, at that point, five minutes in, I think we were all thinking, wow, what a day. But, the, I mean, in terms of the free kick, Sean, just how good was it? Yes, I mean, he, he puts it down and you're just thinking, I could see this happening again. I could see yeah. it happening again. <laughs> and he puts it down and, and there was a moment where I thought, does it favour the right footer? And then I went, David still was around the board. No, you just, <laughs> yeah, just erased that thought. I mean, and he just puts it in. It's, it's beautifully, you know, struck uh, a great free kick. And this, this is what David brings. It's, it's just quality. We then had the second goal that came from Jesus, and as, as you touched upon that, something we saw that we don't usually see, and actually what we were saying before the game, he's got so many different factors to his game, and one of them is that he can one-on-one -on -one embarrass a player. Yeah, and that's the thing we sometimes forget. He has that natural Brazilian flair that comes associated with being Brazilian, um, but that goal, uh, kind of the first touch was nice, but what killed the defender is the second touch. The fact that he hasn't had to break stride and he's moved the ball the direction. If you look at Cook, I think was the covering defender, he doesn't even have time to adjust his feet, so the fact that he's done that without breaking stride is, is remarkable. There was then a, an incident there at the, the end of the, the first half where it, it looked like, for, for, for me anyway, in my opinion, that it was a penalty that Jesus had got there and his, his leg was taken. Penalty for you, Sean? Yeah, I thought I thought it was a clear-cut penalty because, again, he had that, I don't know, that, that foot in front of the defender to, to win the ball and the defender is just taking him out. I, I couldn't understand why the ref didn't give it, but I thought it was an easy decision, in fact. Well, he's one of them as well. Like, I, 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 it's the first time I think I've mentioned it on the show, but you do have to ask for, for VAR. Is that not the purpose then to look back? Because it went out for a throw in here, but it didn't even seem to yeah. get checked. So I'm, I'm surprised it didn't look at it, but I think that's one of the instances where you miss the crowd because I think the reaction of the crowd now ah, instinctively makes the referee VAR check that more, put more scrutiny on there. VAR checks everything. So, so, so the at the start of the season we had a, a, a run through with it, um, a talk through about it, and VAR is checks everything. Is that's what they'll tell you? Um, and then if VAR thought it was, they would have highlighted it to the referee. But I think we've I mean, VAR incidents in the last couple of weeks are just wrong ones are just piling up now. Yeah. And we've got to remember it's a restart for the officials as well. So regardless of yep. the players of obviously getting used to what they're accustomed to, the officials are doing the same thing. So we've got to give them some leeway. The, the fact that it doesn't going to impact the game, we're not going to think that, that decision is going to impact the results. So we've got to take it with a pinch of salt and hopefully we get one when it matters. Something we've not been too used to seeing over the last few games is actually a slight bit of pressure in our defensive third. And there was a couple moments there where it definitely looked like there was one when but they cut it back. Uh, I can't remember who it was. Cut, cut it back and, and that could have been a goal. So Bournemouth definitely aren't kind of just rolling over and still feel like they could get something out of this game, do you think, Sean? No, not at all. I mean... When they've when they've been in the final third at times they've they've been been effective. I mean, there was the a great save as well from Edison. I mean, yeah, that that save was was exceptional because I'm thinking that's a goal yeah. and it hits the post, hits him. He has the lock where it comes out uh, comes out on the right side for him, and it was a brilliant save. But Bournemouth again, they 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 are probably thinking. Perhaps we should have had a go. Mm -hmm. uh, and City will be thinking, we need to keep a clean sheet. We need to keep a clean sheet. And I'm sure that's what Pep will be. Yeah, urging. but the, in credit to Bournemouth, 
Their chances haven't come from errors, which is what we've seen in the past. We know that City mm. maybe make a mistake and that teams capitalise. That hasn't come. They've come from their kind of persistence and pressure in the final third. And like Sean said, that the safer medicine is vital to this, the outcome of this game. I think the, the score was 1-0 at the time. And if it's 1-1 at half-time, it's, it's a massive confidence boost for Bournemouth. But in regards to the save, I think he was willing to hit the post, which you don't normally see. I think keepers, when they're going to hit the post, they kind of retract their arm a little bit and then they don't have the strength. But he was just willing to go, I'm, I'm going into this post, whether or not. Edison, on that, by the way, I've seen him on a few occasions throw himself into some positions and it's like he just doesn't care. Like, do you remember the, there was the one, was it against United, I think, when he took the, the head wound and then came back after a few games? Like, he puts himself about. He, he does. <laughs> Listen, you can see the character so every time there has been in the past a little incident in the tunnel, Addison's there. So that tells you his temperament. He's, he's just ready. What, he's you want ready. to kick off? Yeah, he's yeah. Ready. And he's so, a big guy. He's a big guy. Yeah, so, a big guy. So, so that tells you. And he's, he, you know, he's made that commitment saying, I'm going to take you out post. I mean, I'm, I'm saving this ball. I'm, I'm saving this ball. So... But, Goalkeepers are that way, innit? They got a yeah, little something that different. That would be strange, keepers. You, if, to enjoy getting hit in the face, potentially with the ball or whatever, yeah. you've got to be a little bit different mindset. <laughs> <laughs> I was sat next to Sean during the game, which was an absolute honour. And Sean was um, gasping any time Edison took um, a, a goal kick about how far it was. And we were just mesmerised by how far he can kick. <laughs> yeah, I, I was sat there. I mean, I used to do this obviously we're playing Viva, it's like Viva, you can set me up with at least two goals this season. Because I used to think, where am I get my goals from? I think, Cal, you got, you got three goals you could get me. You know, I'm thinking, Julian, you can set me up with about four. You know, I am. Oh, I'm yeah. thinking everybody can get... And Addison, the way he kicks the ball, I would be in that dressing room saying, you owe me four goals this season. <laughs> because he launched a goal kick to yeah. the D of the other, and I just thought, that's the thing, I, with no, no. no offsides. If, if, if yeah. Jesus just literally stood on the edge of the box, because he's got the well, record right for... Longest kick. Yeah, yeah longest does. kick, yeah, yeah, so yeah. he's got the record yeah. for that. So if he just literally stood there, he's like, go on then. Defenders are going to think, is he going to do it, is he not? But they have to mark him, because he's not offside. Yeah. <laughs> Changes <laughs> the game, innit? That's Tactic totally... for Pep there, we yeah. give him tactics here. Yeah, yeah. Listen. Have that one for free, Pep. <laughs> and we can go to Pep now live. Uh... <laughs> We've heard Pep as well say that Edison is the best penalty taker. I wonder if that would have been a penalty at the end, if it gets to oh, one point it. in the season, if we'll ever see Edison take but, a penalty. I think Pep's too professional to allow that to happen. Like, if, it, if it's a meaningful game, I don't think he would take it because you're going to have Kevin yeah. De Bruyne on the pitch. But I don't think Pep would disrespect the opposition in just saying, go on, Edison, just because it's the last game of the season. I don't think he would do that. So he's not Stuart Pearce putting David James up yeah, front? Yeah, naive, <laughs> naively doing that. The There's never a time yeah. for David James should be up front. There's never a time for that. I love also, sorry, the idea I've got of Sean halfway through the season being like, you've got me my two assists, Natalie. Lovely. <laughs> Kel, least, lovely yeah. work. You've given me a bonus one. <laughs> Jolien, no you assists your bonuses, you? Yeah. What you splitting your bonuses, more importantly, with the people that are giving you the assists? Was you splitting your bonuses? Wow, wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Selective memory. <laughs> hey, Julian's in the games. He's trying to negotiate. Hey? <laughs> <laughs> he does how it works. It's like, four assists, you know what I'm getting short? All right. <laughs> <laughs> as, as we look to the second half um, then, and, and Sean, you mentioned it, that actually maybe part of that lack of rhythm that we've had has come from not being quite quick but at, from the back in the two centre-halves. Is that something then you think you'd like to see us as we play the next 45? Yeah, just less touches. So, so Otamendi or Stones, instead of having five touches, it, it's, you know, two touches. Receive, bang, pass, receive, pass. And, and what, that means that they can't keep the, the, their perfect lines as midfielders. So that's where the gaps will appear to then pass through that pass through the third or through into David Silver mm -hmm. uh, or, or Bernardo Silver and we can break those lines a lot a lot easier. Natalie, I believe as well that you guys have been getting in touch at home and socials, which we'd love that you do. This is your show, remember. Yeah, we absolutely love your tweets. Don't forget hashtag WNRH. And most of the tweets that are coming through to us are just absolute and utter praise for the man, for the magician, for David Silver. And I, I'm I'm gonna try and Stay composed as I read some of them out. Um, so I've had a lovely one. Hello, yes, yeah. breathe. Breathe. for you to say. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Ryan has put, and this picture's been going around Twitter if you haven't seen it, it's David Silver. 10 years ago, David Silver now with all the trophies that he's won. And it's an absolute beautiful picture. And it says, God damn legend. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that on here? <laughs> Let's have that with the love heart eyes. Um, we are Man City. I said every Man City fan is Bernardo Silva when they see David Silva. And there's an incredible picture there of them hugging. Totally agree. Um, 
We've got one from AB whose Twitter name is Raz Sterling and it says David Silva literally walks into every midfield in the world still at 34, an unreal player. Uh, and then you've got BBC Five Live Sport, the official account tweet and it's just not fair really. You've not got Kevin De Bruyne on the field and you can still do that. Uh, and of course that's David Silva's free kick. Um, and then we've got City Square Live, my, my lovely City Square Live team um, and they've put a video together of loads of junior blues all cheering for David Silver's goal as well. And then the last one, just to tell you about, is James Madison, obviously the Leicester player, has put, sorry, but David Silver is a true Premier League great. So much respect for him. <sighs> Getting emotional getting emotional so I'm going to go compose myself uh, and we're going to be back at full time um, and we will definitely include a five minute section as I like to do on every We're Not Really Here show where we just talk about the wonderful David Silva so we've got that to come plus our full time analysis and predictions are still very much in with the shout so we'll see if anyone got it right see you at full time